Hello, Stroke Lines. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a function I wrote using uh, Geek Dudes, or it's leveraging Geek Dudes uh, Chrome class. And so, right here, I'm just connecting to my current instance of Chrome, which was launched with um, the Chrome uh, class, and I store it in tab. And then I call my uh, my Chrome get function, and so I pass tab as the basically the pointer to what I'm going to connect to. And in the first example here, I'm going to I'm going to pull the ID. Um, of and the attribute is site description and actually for IDs IDs don't have an index so um, this just gets uh, uh, not negated but you know it doesn't get paid attention to and then I'm going to dump it into this uh, to the data variable which will be an object and then I'm going to use this explore object to iterate over it and I'll show up down here um, so first, let me come back over here and let me show you how I'm um, in here. Let's see. I think it's up here is where I did this. So inspect and let's see, where is it? Um, I should just go ahead. So site title and then site description. And so let me go back to uh, studio. So here's site description. That's how I grabbed that. And now I'm going to save this, reload it and run it. And you'll see it returned back um, four things. So there's the inner text, the outer HTML, text content, and then value. And so this is in my um, data object, and you can access it any way you want. So so let's say I didn't want to dump it in here, uh, but I wanted to actually um, look at the inner text. So I can just say, I'm going to do a message box, data.innerText. And now when I reload this and run it, it throws the inner text, which I saw right from here, right into my message box. Um, now, I've built into this using ID, so let's let's leave the message. Actually, yeah, let's put it back to the output window. And instead of using ID, let's use class for class name. And we'll come back in here and see what class was that, um, if there was one. So span. Title, or nothing, nothing, span, hd1, well, let's set description, all right, let's, let's go to here to, to this one, I know this one has something, so here's class, widget title, I'm going to come in here, widget title, now classes, they, they are an array, um, let me put it in here, let's just see if it happens to be the first one, because if it is, it should come back with, well, it'll show down here. Um, let me save it, reload it, and run it. So, um, let's see, Joe Glein said, oh, so that actually, did it, did it save? Let me try this again. Save, reload. Oh, it did. I'm sorry. Here's, um, interesting. So I, I didn't notice that, but see how value here is categories? Um, and here, text content is categories. But the text content still said this. Let me let me get rid of all of that and rerun that. Hello. There we go. Okay. I, um. You know what? I oh. I I my output window. I don't have it blanking the the output. Um. I should fix that. Let me get back to this. This is that was just a hot string that pulls that up, and so here. Um, I have to pass parameters to blink out the window. So now when I run it, you'll see it blink down below and it and it clears the window for me so I don't get confused like that again. I noticed there were additional numbers here and I'm like, wait a minute, there's, there's not over seven. Um, but that was an example of using class. And then let's use tag. Now, of course, tags, I, I hate using tags because there are so many tags. So let's go back up to here because this will have fewer tags. And we'll inspect it and this tag will be span, um, but I doubt it's the first span. So we're going to come back here and say tag and span. Um, I'm looking at the output here. So automatic one script at time. Title looks like there's the a trap. So actually, that maybe that was the very first one. Um, but to demonstrate, let's say I wanted the second span, right? I can come in here and change this to two. I in my function, they're not zero based indexed, so they're one. And so you can the first one is one, and the second one's two. There's my second span, my third span. Save it, reload, launch. 
Um, and so you can just keep going over um, each each tag. And what's the last name? Um, oh, name. All right, so let's swap this out to name. And I think I think that first one had a name. Was it that one? If not, I, I'm pretty sure the search one is S. Let's inspect it. Yeah, name, name, so see value name equals S. And so I'm gonna come back in here. Actually, that search, I don't know if that'll, I think because that text is there, it might put in there, but let's put, um, this worked here. And come back, and I already put in name. Oh, we need to change this back to a one. Name, name is gonna be S. And let's save, reload, and run. Oh, didn't like it. I don't think that's case sensitive, but let's make sure of that. Apparently it is. Um, so see the value here? This worked. And if we were to grab the second one, because I happen to know from my other uh, video, uh, there's this search and then there's this search. And so I, um, I am curious. Let's see if the second one is actually, if it's going to come up with search or if it just comes up blank because I haven't typed in there. So it comes up blank, but if I come back in here, oh, I could see, so second, come over here, save, reload, one, and there's the second. And so I did that by indexing this to the second one. Anyway, um, I'll, I'll post this function. Again, it, if you're nesting things and stuff, it doesn't take care of that, but it is much easier to get your feet wet with uh, web scraping. Um, learning the DOM is critical if you want to do advanced stuff, and so uh, I would highly recommend, granted the, the tutorials I have are in IE, but it, the DOM stays the same no matter what. Thank you.